right, welcome to the Nikki Clark Show. And how's everybody doing? Awesome, fantastic, fantastic. Thank you so much for being here. You've made the right choice. You're here Friday night live at the Go Live TV studios here in Toronto, and it's a spectacular night. So thank you so much for joining. The Nikki Clark Show is about transforming lives one story at a time, and we've been doing this for 15 years. Can you imagine? 15 years on the air, and I'm so happy that we're going to be celebrating our 15th anniversary, October 27th, here at the studio at 7 p.m., so make sure that you come back and be a part of the wonderful experience of performances uh, from Abel Maxwell from Ottawa, and also we have Desiree D and Ciara Lay. It's going to be spectacular, so please come celebrate with us, enjoy a wonderful evening of music and camaraderie and cake. All right? So that's October 27th. Uh, so it's, it's just uh, phenomenal to be back. Uh, it's, I, I started the show um, 15 years ago from uh, a life of teaching, which I still love doing, but I really wanted to um, hear how people overcame uh, certain journeys in their life. And as much as I get to hear their stories, I get to learn. And uh, their stories have impacted me in a, in a beautiful way. Uh, so it's really a privilege to be here and to just be kind of a, a facilitator to um, share these great stories. So uh, with that said, I would love for you to meet an incredible individual. She is um, multifaceted, multi-talented, and she's the author of Never Let a good disaster go to waste, making sense of a life of absurdity. Please put your hands together and welcome author Kat Finnerty to the show. Awesome. Welcome. It's good to have you. Thanks, Nikki. Thanks for having me. It's uh, such a pleasure. I'm really so uh, honored to have you here. I, um, I had the pleasure of speaking with you the other day, and we, we spoke about uh, so many um, great parallels in, in our lives, and I never really thought of certain experiences being a good thing, but I learned from you uh, how you've kind of used a mindset to change what happened to make it an opportunity. So let's talk about that. I'd love to know about your background leading up to, you know, becoming this incredible author of the book. So can you tell us? Sure. <laughs> so I'm a mom of three kids. I teach yoga. Me too. And, <laughs> and um, I grew up right here in Toronto. I was always, you know, a into fitness and health. And in my 20s, I decided to go backpacking to Australia. Okay. I fell in love with a man. And when I had our, our first child at the age of 27, my, I was diagnosed with MS. My first son was two weeks old. And I was told I'd be in a wheelchair by the time I was 40. And I was looking at this little baby and I thought, oh my gosh, you know, in 15 years, he could be pushing me around. Mm. And I thought, no way. No. That's not going to be me. I'll find a cure or I'll die trying. Mm. And so that's when I really realized that I had the opportunity to master this really massive disaster, really. Mm -hmm. And I spent the next 10 years, the next decade, just looking for answers. Right. So, so the disaster at that time was the, the health health issue. At that time, yeah. yeah. But I'd had so many disasters throughout my life. From the age of six, I had really terrible migraines. On my 12th birthday, my mother died and I was the eldest oh of five. So I really learned about the idea of a per impermanence really early. Like no matter what you want in life, it could be taken in a moment mm -hmm. and everything is fleeting. At the age of 16, I was quite suicidal. I was mm -hmm. really hit a low point in my life and as I was about to jump off the bridge, literally, mm. I thought, I'll end my pain, but who am I transferring my pain from mm. to? So I'll be transferring my pain onto the people I love the most. And mm -hmm. I thought, and from all of these disasters, I learned some amazing life lessons that I just kept carrying through mm. with me. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing that. That's uh, an incredible journey. 
and uh, it's really a testament to your strength. But there was more that happened to you. Um, so you, you know, you were, you're dealing with uh, the MS and, and trying to find um, a solution to that, but something else happened. Can you tell yes. us that? Yeah. So the impetus for actually me writing the book right. was on my 40th birthday, I was part of a drug trial, or sorry, not a drug trial, a surgery to cure MS. And the night of my 40th birthday, I got home and my um, husband, I found out, was cheating on me. So after 15 years of marriage and three years, I was completely and utterly destroyed. Mm -hmm. And then over the night, I thought, I can choose to suffer for 12 hours, 12 days, 12 years, or a lifetime. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But the length of time I suffer is up to me. Right. And by the time morning came, I transformed it, and I was happy. And I thought, I'm going to write a book, How to Get Over Betrayal in 12 Hours. Okay. And then that turned into Never Let a Good Disaster Go to Waste, in which I have my principles. You have your principles, and um, I, I, we're going to talk about those, but something else happened. Do you want to talk about um, the, the uh, being... Marooned on an island? Yes, yes. <laughs> so interestingly enough, I, I spent 10 years talking about writing a book, or sorry, six years talking about writing this book. I'm 51 now, so 11 years you ago. You look amazing, by the way. Doesn't she? <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So yeah, I decided to write a book called Never Let a Good Disaster Go to Waste, and I went to an island called Vanuatu, in 2019, I'd known a publisher there that was going to help me. And I met a man and I fell in love. And then the, uh, the world shut down. COVID mm. happened. So I was going there for basically two weeks. And I ended up getting stuck there for two and a half years. Two and a half years. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine? Marooned right. in paradise. And even though it's paradise, it does have a dark side. Mm. Because it has disasters, natural disasters all the time. Uh, like, So yeah, Vanuatu is actually known as the most disaster prone country in the world for natural disasters. So we have earthquakes weekly, we have tsunamis, we have cyclones, literally exploding volcanoes that we can see from our doorstep. So it's like, it's great. It's action packed. It's action packed. <laughs> Yeah. Who needs TV? No, yeah. no. It, that's, that's reality TV right there. But um, you, you said something about the people uh, in, in, on that island. Uh, you learned so much from them. What were some of the values you learned? It was really interesting because I'd gone to Vanuatu with a book called Never Let a Good Disaster Go to Waste. And I'd never heard of Vanuatu. And then I ended up in the most disaster prone country in the world right. in the middle of a For disaster. For two and a half years. <laughs> and... Yeah, even though it's the most disaster prone, the people there are the happiest in the world. And I really was astounded that these principles that I sort of came up with the night of my husband's betrayal, and I just realized there are lessons I'd learned throughout my life. Mm -hmm. The people there almost, they, they live them. They live in the now. They radically accept whatever's happening. They don't worry about the past, and they don't worry about the future. Right. They just live in the present, and they notice that everything is perfect in the here and now. It's like they've figured out the meaning of life, and that is that they have everything they need just in the moment. In the moment. Mm -hmm. And which, which leads me to um, this question, because I find a lot of people become stuck in a victim kind of mindset. So what have you learned to help people become unstuck and to move from victim to victor? There is a quote that I love, and I say this mantra to myself all the time. My happiness is no one else's responsibility. Right. And my suffering is no one else's fault. And although we often get this, we constantly blame the traffic, other mm -hmm. people, like this person mm -hmm. made me so angry, and we think right. we have no control over our thoughts. But one of my first principles in my book is like, we can control our thoughts. We are the ones talking in our heads. So we do have the power mm -hmm. to allow our experiences to embitter us or to make us better. Excellent. Uh, can you give us two more principles from your book? Yeah. So one of them is no one else needs to wear my pain. Mm -hmm. So I think this was really profound. The night of my husband leaving, 
I thought, if I don't get over this and transform this, who's going to suffer? My children. Mm -hmm. So I thought, if I don't let my pain go, I just transfer it onto the ones I love. Right. So my kids were the ones that would suffer. So I always say, you know, don't wear your pain. Find a purpose in that pain. And that pain was to have empathy and compassion for others. How could I ever understand what anyone ever felt like going through a betrayal right. if I'd never suffered it myself? So right. I'm like, every time something bad happens, I'm like, oh, good. Now I know how everyone else feels when they right. go through this. Because suffering is not unique. Our problems are not special. Mm -hmm. If you have a problem, congratulations. You've got a heartbeat. You're still alive. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. So what you're saying is, is absolutely um, true. So it gives you a deeper insight uh, and, and um, the empathy and, and the deep compassion for those um, going through their suffering. Or what, what you have taught me, opportunity to take negative experiences or disasters and call them an opportunity, right? Yeah, and problems don't have to be problems mm -hmm. if you flip your perspective on, on it. So all of a sudden, your problems allow you to become stronger. Yes. I, I've taught fitness my whole life. And, and, you know, when people are doing squats and they're in pain, I'm like, don't worry. This pain is going to make you stronger. <laughs> and that's, it, that's No pain, it no is. gain. <laughs> no pain, no gain. And, and when you go through your darkest times, that's when you look in the mirror and you go, toughen up buttercup mm -hmm. you've got this you've got this you've got this all right give us one more principle please so another principle that i really like is just radical acceptance no matter what is happening radically accept it and know that you are always in control of your response you can't always control what happened to you but you're in control of your response and I always say to people, how long are you going to hang on to that pain for? Mm -hmm. When would now be a good time to let go of that suffering? Right. Just radically forgive and let go. I love that. Radically let go. Amazing. So tell us, um, how can people get a copy of the book? So my book is, you can go to my website at catfinity.com. And uh, you can also go to Amazon and Barnes & Noble in America. So I've got Instagram, Facebook, Catfinity, and I'd love for you to reach out and have a chat. Thank Let, you. Let's become masters of disaster together. Awesome. And this is my copy? It is. I hope? Yes. Oh, thank you. And I, you have to sign it for me. A special message in there. Um, and, and before we, we uh, close, um, I've learned so much from you in, in just a few minutes. Someone who's watching right now who needs encouragement, what would you tell them in the middle of their disaster? Yeah. First of all, what did you think? That you would be the one person in this world not to experience disaster? We all go through disasters, and we all have a choice when we go through those disasters to allow them to empower us or to allow them to destroy us. Become the master of your disaster, not a victim of them. I love it. Thank you so much. Kat Finnerty, everybody, please get a copy of her book, Never Let a Good Disaster Go to Waste. Follow her on social media. Get a copy of the book on Amazon and Barnes & Noble. We'll be right back. Thank you so much.